and welcome back to another vlog um first of all i hope you're all doing really well everyone's okay out there it's uh it's actually thursday today so i'm starting this vlog a little bit later than i would want to it's probably not going to be as long as i would like at the end of this but we'll see how it goes maybe i'll vlog into the weekend i actually had a comment on a video last week uh which i'm not sure was said entirely in kindness <laughs> But somebody basically told me that it wouldn't be an I cover the video without me moaning about the weather. So uh, for that commenter and that commenter alone, let me talk about the weather for a second. <laughs> I can't help it, I'm British. So I'm not sure I need to tell anybody about how hot it was last week. I'm sure we were all fully aware. Um, I, my brain just doesn't function the heat. I don't know why, <laughs> um, but I seem to just shut down like an overheated laptop. So I decided to kind of skip a vlog for the week because uh, filming was just impossible. I live in a particularly cold flat, we don't get a lot of direct heat, and even this was like an oven. I was sat with the blinds closed in the coldest room with the fan on me, just praying for it to stop. So yeah, filming went kind of out the window, but I managed to get quite a bit done. I basically spent last week and actually the beginning of this week getting pretty much all, if not most of the Depop orders out and shipped. Uh, I think you might have seen a little bit of me doing that in this montage that the vlog started with. Um, also you would have seen a lot of rain. So the heat wave is over but we have rain now, which I'm actually not that, I'm not that sad about. So uh, yes, I've been packing up orders, I've been going to the post office multiple times. Um, I always manage to get this one poor post office employee that looks at me with my sacks and sacks of parcels and, and just sort of like deflates. But he's lovely and he managed to get everything out for me, so thank you to him. So that then brings us to today, uh, in which I am doing something that I haven't done since the beginning of the year, I think. So today I'm going into central London. I talked about this a little bit in another vlog, but um, starting to do those everyday things that you're so used to again, but which you haven't done for a really long time, is super nerve wracking at the moment. So um, today I'm going to be getting on the tube and, you know, doing doing all those things. And I'm definitely feeling anxious about it. Um, like I did say before, all these things that I have done again for the first time, I've been nervous about them that I've done it and I've just felt such a sense of relief because it, it does feel normal again and it's good, it's good to get back into those routines that we've been missing. So I'm going to central London, um, here's me complaining, and I'm going to have a facial which I am incredibly, incredibly ready for. Not only is my skin ready, but my body, my soul, my everything. Um, so the House of Elemis which is Elemis's kind of flagship um, skincare facial, I guess they call it a salon, has just reopened and they invited me to go and try out one of their new no-touch facial treatments, which I am very excited for. I've had quite a few Elemis facials in the past and truly, really have enjoyed them. So yes, I'm very much looking forward to that. I'm gonna share with you guys how my skin looks and everything that went on. So at the moment we're having a no makeup day. I've got some tinted SPF on, but that is it. And um, I, my skin doesn't look bad at the moment, but it definitely could do with some work. I feel like exfoliation is going to be key today. So that is what I'm off to do. Uh, I've just gotten ready and dressed. So let's do a little outfit and I'll show you what I'm wearing into London today. So here is what I am wearing today. It's actually really hard to know how to dress at the moment because it's been raining on and off, but it's still so hot. So um, I was thinking about wearing a trench coat, but... I think that's kind of off the cars now because I went outside and it's still really, really humid. So I've gone for light layers um, and breathable fabrics. I've got on this H&M like little woven top. It's very nice actually. It's got like a scoop neck and then some wider sleeves. But it's actually a pretty thin knit and it's got some, some holes in it basically. That is how I'm describing that. And then I have that on with these trousers. These are a staple for me at the moment. I don't think I've really worn anything else but these <laughs> jeans, no thank you, linen trousers, yes, please let me wear you. Uh, these are also from H&M, they're little tie waist, um, just quite loose actually, wide leg trousers, 
and they are bliss to wear. They are so, so comfortable. So I thought those would be good as well if I'm lying down on the table and still wearing my trousers. Um, and then I've also got, I'm wearing a full H&M outfit today and I had no idea, apologies for that. I've got my H&M chunky flip-flop sandals on too, which could potentially get very wet, but I think they'll cope with it. So exciting part of this outfit is actually the bag I am carrying. Um, I really want to talk about this a little bit more in depth, so I'll wear it today because this is the first time I'll be taking it out, but then maybe we'll talk about it a little bit later on in this vlog. But uh, after my big handbag video and clear out, I kind of got the bug a little bit and I was, I was actually on Vestier because I was trying to find links for things um, to include in that video and I saw this. It is a Bottega Veneta uh, vintage bag and I absolutely fell for it. I was talking about how I've been wearing a lot of tote bags at the moment because I just want to sling something over my shoulder and chuck a, a bunch of stuff in and not have to think about it. And this kind of fits the bill for that, but it's, you know, it's a little bit nicer, it's a bit fancier. Um, it's got that classic Bottega, like, woven leather look. But what I liked about it is these straps, which are really, really long. Um, so it's like a tote bag, but it's just, it's a bit different, it's a bit special. I also like that it was vintage. It's in really good condition on the outside. There are a few marks and things on the lining though, which honestly don't really bother me. But because of that, I managed to get it for quite a steal. So we'll talk about that later, I think, when I have more time. But I really, I just threw it on today. It literally came in the post this morning. I really like how it looks with this outfit. I'm gonna put this on now and off we go. to this as well and clearly talking too much is not something I'm used to so um, it's Thursday today I wanted to sit down and talk to you uh, is it Thursday it's not even Thursday it's Friday today Thursday was yesterday stay on track so I actually came out the facial yesterday um, with a brand new skincare routine which I was not expecting um, Ella must have been so kind and generous because not only did they uh, give me the facial that I had. They've also given me some beautiful skincare to try out too. And I literally have an entire routine here, so I just wanted to talk through this. I've done one round of it so far because I did my skincare last night and then this morning, and I really like it so far. Uh, in terms of the facial, it was so thorough. Um, we started off with a consultation, they took a picture of my skin, which I'll pop up here for you guys. I found it so fascinating um, looking at like not just my skin texture, but the dark spots that are developing, which you can't necessarily see, you know, with the naked eye, redness. Uh, it was very technical and very interesting. So I, I don't think my skin's too bad in terms of I have been using SPF pretty much every day of my life and um, I try and take the best care of that I can. So that was it's always good to be affirmed. We decided on a resurfacing facial because I think my one downfall is really exfoliation. I'm so bad at remembering to exfoliate and incorporating it into my routine. Um, so it was very kind of focused on rejuvenating my skin. Uh, there was lots of like enzymes used and it was a no touch facial, which was really interesting. There was a bunch of tools um, and lots of like very magic-y feeling wands and spoons and things. There were these metal cooling spoons that were like used for facial massage. That was so amazing. I actually went home and Googled to try and buy some. I, I couldn't find them. I don't really know what they're called. So if anybody can help me out there, please feel free because I want to put those on my face every single day. Um, so yeah, the main kind of focus and what my skin felt like afterwards was just really fresh, really um, exfoliated and firmed. And it feels good, it feels a lot more glowy now. So I've got a few products to kind of continue that with. Quite a few of them are from the Dynamic Resurfacing range, which kind of makes sense because that was what my facial was. And if you watch my videos, my skincare ones in particular, you know how much I 
love these. This is pretty much as far as my exfoliation goes. Um, they're the pads. You can actually use these twice a day. I usually just use them at night. Um, and then you sweep it across your skin and it's a lactic acid based uh, chemical exfoliator. And it really does make my skin feel very soft and smooth. So I've got another packet of those to get through, which is not really difficult because I love them and use them all the time. And then the facial wash. Really into facial washes right now. I don't know if it's because it's summer and I feel like I don't know, I just want something really fresh and cleansing on my skin and I want to feel that like splash of water, especially in the mornings, rather than going for something like a hot cloth cleanser, which I still do love and I probably use those if I'm wearing a lot of makeup, but when I basically just have skincare on and nothing else, I really like a wash. So I've got the dynamic resurfacing wash to use, so I'll do the wash, the pads as a toner, um, I've got the serum too, dynamic resurfacing serum which is just another boost of that rejuvenating exfoliation to add in. I've also got the mask. I think this is like a twice a week, three times a week mask, um, and it's an enzyme-based one. I used to use the papaya, papaya extract resurfacing mask from Elemis, which I'm not sure if they still do. I think they might, but this is kind of like an amped up version and it's quite tingly. She used this on me in the facial and it definitely feels like it's really sloughing away like dead skin cells which we love to see. So that's all of those. And then I have a few other bits. I've got an oil to use. I've kind of gone through phases of using oils and not. My skin is very dry, so I feel like it does need as much moisture as it can get. But sometimes I feel like oils are a bit heavy. Uh, I've got this superfood facial oil to try, which looks like this. Elemis oil is one of the first that I ever tried, so I do, I do know that they suit my skin and I trust them. Um, so that I'm gonna use in the morning, I think. I got a very detailed list of instructions laid out to me that I took a photo of, which I need to try and remember. And then I have this eye mask, a Pro Collagen Eye Revive mask, which I think is actually maybe my favourite thing so far. It's so cool. It looks like this yellow jelly, and it really is like a firm gel, so you need the smallest amount, and you can actually pat this on on top of your makeup. You can use it overnight, obviously, as an eye mask, but you don't have to wipe it off in the morning. Um, you just cleanse your face as normal. I really like this so far because it's super nourishing. I feel like I need that help. When they took the photos of my face, I did have some lines around my eyes, which concerning. Natural and going to happen, but still can be prevented for a little bit longer. So I'm gonna really be quite religious and stick to that because I do skimp on eye creams occasionally. It's something I also forget to do. And then the final thing is this Superfood Glow Priming Moisturizer with kombucha, which sounds very interesting. So I have this on today, and it's actually a really glowy moisturizer. So it is a moisturizing primer. You can use it as both. Let's see if I can show you what it looks like. If I rub it into my hand there, it's like a really iridescent, golden, but not over the top, like shiny kind of glow. So I've got that on, and I feel like my skin, it does look very glowy, obviously from the facial yesterday and then from some skincare that I've used on top of it. I do have makeup on today. If I get a little bit closer, I do have makeup on, but I feel like it went on so nicely and my skin does actually feel really just fresh and tight and firm and good. So this is an entire day's makeup on top of that, but yeah, I'm really happy with all of that. <laughs> I feel like I have to show you this candle lighter. I'm just uh, about to light this candle, which actually, hang on, I need to trim the wick. Oh, 
always trim your wicks, guys, for optimal candle burning. So yes, I feel like I have to show you this candle lighter. I saw, who did I see use this? I feel like it was Jess, one of Jess's vlogs. And she had one of these and I thought it was amazing. So you turn it on at the bottom and then instead of like a flame, I'm kind of terrified of touching this. So I'm gonna try very hard not to, but to light the candle, you literally just, whoop, hold it on. And that is it. I thought that was so cool. I got this on Amazon for, it wasn't that expensive, but it wasn't, you know, super cheap. Um, but there's my little novelty <laughs> item of the day. So I've been using that to light my candles. I'm sure many of you will be happy that I changed this on over finally. I had a very burnt out base candle, but I have switched it for figure. The candle name I can never say. This is actually the first diptyque candle I ever had. Um, and it still to this day is one of my favorites. So there we go. So we are coming towards the end of this vlog now, um, and the end of the week. I don't usually vlog on a Sunday, so this feels a little bit out of the ordinary. I had a very relaxing Sunday, um, actually. We started off our morning at the farmer's market, got some pastries and bits for breakfast, which was quite a treat, and we've actually just finished watching Tangled. So I'm having a great Sunday, all in all. Uh, jo has just gone out to get some beers, uh, I hear there's some football on later, so lucky me. Um, apparently it's quite an important one, Champions League final, something like that. So yeah, he's going to watch that. I think I'll take this opportunity to um, get the vlog edited ready for tomorrow. But before I do all of those things, I did mention that I would talk to you guys about this bag. So I'm going to have to try very hard not to burn my hair off with this candle behind me but um yeah let's have a little rundown talk about this bag so like i mentioned i bought this second hand on vestier i've purchased quite a few things via vestier so i feel like i'm a little bit um seasoned in purchasing second hand from there i think it's quite an easy platform to use especially to sort of search for things that you're looking for in particular you can really narrow things down by brand um, by style, by colour. So if you're looking for a certain handbag, you will find it there quite easily. Despite that, this bag actually just sort of popped up and presented itself to me. I wasn't looking for it. Um, it just sort of appeared. But what I did once I saw that listing is actually search for it again on the website. Uh, and a couple more came up. So this is actually classed as a vintage bag. That's another thing you can narrow your search down to is to look particularly for vintage. Um, that's what I usually prefer to do. I kind of like buying secondhand things that are more vintage styles um, and not really current um, pieces that are around. You definitely can do that on Vestia and it's a great place to find something that's in season um, and barely used for you know a fraction of the cost because it is previously loved. So I did actually find a second listing for this exact same bag. Um, there were two altogether. One was in the US and one was here in the UK. And um, they had very similar price points actually. The US one was slightly more, but it was in better condition. So that one was pretty much perfect. The lining was super intact, whereas the lining on the UK one, which was slightly less, had some kind of marks and spots and some ink stains. So I initially put the um, US one into my bag, but um, after that I was kind of hit by a shipping fee. One thing you have to be wary of is that there will be authentication fees uh, and shipping as well. So with the shipping and all that in total, it actually added like an extra, I think it was an extra hundred pounds onto the price of the bag. Um, and I just thought for what it was, a vintage bag, I didn't want to pay quite that much. So I settled for the one that was here in the UK, which also had super fast like seller to buy a shipping, which you don't have to pay for. Um, but then obviously it had a few marks inside, which I will show you. To me, that doesn't really bother me. The outside is actually perfect. The straps, um, the body of the bag, everything, the hardware, I think it looks great. So I'm, I'm super pleased with it. So I thought I would show you this bag in a kind of uh, what's in my bag style. Obviously I've been using this now for a good couple of days. I've taken it on quite a few trips, so I feel like I've got to grips with it and I know what I can fit in it. Obviously this hasn't accumulated quite the amount of trash that my handbags usually would, but um, I've managed to fit a fair bit in here and there is still some space, so I thought I'd just go through and show you what I have. The bag itself is kind of split up into three portions. There's two either side 
um, and then a zipper in the middle, which is obviously where I have been putting more valuable items and things that you know you, you wouldn't want to be taken out of your bag. There is like a small popper on the top here, but it doesn't seal completely because it is more like a tote. So um, inside this middle compartment is where I am keeping my camera. I have my film camera here. I have about three rolls of film that I need to get developed and I'm eking this last one out. I really need to finish it because I've I've gotten to that point where I've now forgotten what's actually on the other ones and I'm quite excited to see. I get a few questions about film photography and to me it's a complete just fun hobby in terms of I don't actually know that much about it. The camera I have is a Leica, it's a mini Lux zoom, which is, is quite expensive as far as um, cameras go. Again, I got this one second hand. I think a lot of uh, film cameras have obviously been marked up in price now because it's kind of the thing to do film photography at the moment. So they are, you know, quite expensive for something that at the time would not have been that much, but there we go. I've also got my card holder inside here. Those of you who have watched other what's in my bags over the years um, on my channel will have seen this many times. It's not, you know, looking the best in terms of the hardware, but this thing is sturdy. It has held up so long. I've literally had it for years and years, this little Sandron card holder. Um, and then also in here are my AirPods, very essential. So that's the middle compartment. And then either side of that, I've got one, I've got one kind of essentials pouch here. I've got a bottle of water. This is a Chili's bottle. These are great. They really keep your water quite cool. So to me, that's always an essential when I'm kind of traveling on public transport. I like to know that I have cold water. I, I've got a few things that are very of this time right now. I've got some antibacterial wipes, which was essentials. Um, for just wiping down surfaces while I'm on public transport and, you know, shopping, like trolleys, things like that, anything I'm touching. I've got some hand sanitizer, and uh, I've also got my mask in here, which I'm going to go and throw in the wash because this is the one that I used and took out last time. Um, and this is the Plumo Studio One, the little linen mask, very comfortable, very nice mask. And then on the other side, I've actually got a book in here, so this bag is definitely uh, book friendly. I could even fit a hardback in here if I wanted to. I, I generally tend to keep like a stack of smaller portable books just to grab if I want something to read when I'm you know, out and about. I haven't started this one yet and I didn't manage to get around to it while I was traveling. I've got Enduring Love by Ian McEwan here, but it is quite a small compact one so I, I just uh, picked it up. I'm not actually reading anything at the moment. So although I didn't start this, maybe I will. I'm kind of, uh, I'm not sure what I want to read right now, so I'm at a bit of an impasse where I don't, I don't know what to pick up. But that is what I thought I'd, I'd get into uh, if I had time. I've got some lip products in here. Always a lip product at the bottom of the handbag. NYX Soft Matte Lip Cream in London. No surprises there. And my Glossy and Mango, Balm.com. Two favourites. I've got some sunglasses in here too. These are, I actually found these again after having lost them or misplaced them for a few months. I hadn't seen them for a really long time and I was kind of giving out hope, but I found them in a coat pocket. They're the Ray-Ban, um, I think they're called the Meteor Blaze Wayfarers. They, they like the regular Wayfarer style, but they don't have a chunky, like a chunky rim to them. I love these, they are the best sunglasses. I'm so happy to have found them again. And oh, the last thing I have in here is, of course, a rogue hairband. So this is the bag inside now, empty. And you can kind of see a little bit more of the wear. One side is fine, it's just sort of the leather's been worn down a bit. And then this is where some of the issues are. There's some ink stains and yeah, it's, it's not pretty, but it doesn't really matter to me. The outside is perfect. My bags tend to get a little bit beaten up on the inside too. And in terms of um, like a resale value because of that, I don't really think this is a bag that I would resell or that would, you know, be that worth it to do. If it was something like, um, I don't know, a Chanel or a bag that is a little bit more in demand in terms of resale, I probably wouldn't have bought one that was this damaged, but I'm really happy with it. The style of it is just perfect to me. I love this woven, um, detail. I love the straps that they're so long and carrying this about has been a joy. It's like wearing a tote bag 
but a fancier version of a tote bag. It's just a perfect shape and style. So that is my little um, roundup of this Bottega Veneta bag that I got second hand, second, third hand, who knows how many people have had this before me, but that's kind of the thing that I do love about buying pre-loved items that were giving them a new life. So there's been a lot of handbag heavy content on this channel of late. So uh, I hope that's okay for you guys and you've enjoyed that. I wanna say thank you to anyone that sat through my hour long handbag collection actually. If you haven't seen that, I'll link it up here, but I was shocked at how many of you actually did um, watch the entire thing. So apparently you like the longer videos. That is something I'll keep note of and that gives me the perfect excuse to just ramble on and on. Um, okay, I think that is gonna be it for today's vlog. I'm gonna sign off here. Thank you all so much for watching once again. Um, I shall see you in the week as well for another video. So that is it for me today uh, and I will see you soon.